What is up everyone, Richie from 04 Mach 1 Speed. So, this is just a quick video review of the Jetbeam SRA40, the intelligent charging high performance 4 cell AA flashlight. Um, a couple of reasons why I got this light, I kind of wanted a bigger, brighter, more powerful version of the EA4, and since I live in Oklahoma, I left this flashlight in my car at 110 degrees, and the little rubber cap that went over the switch kind of ballooned up, so I just kind of ripped it off and put some tape on it. So it is no longer IPX8 anymore, and Kylie decides to be in uh, this video today. She's been in two of my videos now. All right. All right. So it wasn't, it wasn't the uh, what piqued my interest in this flashlight. It wasn't the 960 lumen output. It was actually the intensity level. Now it doesn't say on the package anywhere what the intensity level is, but it is 38,000 CD. It's very unusual for a four cell AA flashlight. You don't normally see that high of a number in intensity but this one has 38,000 CD. Now, um, if you guys are familiar with uh, self-built on candle power forms, he talks about um, in a very well detailed review of all the four, three and four cell um, high powered AA flashlights. Um, and on, the, on his review, he uses a standard light box testing method. Um, he uses a PVC LMD lux meter. Um, he also uses it at one lux to tell you exactly what the output and what the intensity on all the flashlights are. It's kind of like a lie detector for flashlights. Um, and he proves that this one is actually not 960 lumens, it's actually 890. So it's only 70 lumens off. You're normally, you're, most time you're never going to get an exact number of lumens. So it could be underrated, it could be overrated, it just depends on the flashlight. Now on the intensity, this says 38,000. He's tested it at one lux at 35,000. So Still not too far off. Thirty-five thousand lux is still unbelievable for a uh, four-cell AA flashlight. So go to his uh, YouTube channel. You'll be able to check him out. Self-built on Candle Power Forms. You'll be able to talk. He'll be able to explain to you about most of these flashlights. Okay. All right. Let me take the batteries out of this thing. Okay. So here is the flashlight. And later on, I'm going to be doing an outside, uh, outside beam shot comparison between these two, the EA4 and the SRA40, so you guys can see what they look like outside in a dark condition. Um, you'll see that the SRA40 just completely destroys the EA4, but it is quite a bit bigger, and a bigger reflector, bigger head, so that you'd expect. Okay. So the machining on this flashlight is fantastic. Uh, Jet Beam always does a good job, uh, except for the Nightcore. I mean, except for, except for the EA4, Nightcore kind of made this one plain looking. Looks like a little mini TK35. Don't eat that. It says don't eat it. Okay. So like I said, <laughs> so like I said, the machining on this flashlight is fantastic. Uh, you have your nice little attachment here for your lanyard, whatever else you want to use. They say this is for a tripod, but I think you can use it for the little stainless steel strike bezel you see Jet Beam always having on their uh, websites. Um, two switch interface. Um, on some of the DDC series flashlights, this is actually a, a screen, like a little monitor, uh, but not on this one. Alright, so the emitter chosen for this flashlight was Generation 2 of the X-Lamp LED, the XML2 T6 emitter. Um, you have the XM, uh, the XML2 is Generation 2 of the X-Lamp LEDs. Some of you may not have known that, but I'm sure most of you probably did. Um, now, one thing you may not know is the XML2 emitter is actually a little bit smaller than the XML. Um, that might give it some better throw as well, but the XML2 is definitely a little bit smaller. I can visually tell, but not very good. All right, so we'll take this off here. Now there, actually, all right, so the battery um, battery carrier is pretty much integrated. There is no battery carrier. Um, it's integrated into the flashlight. It does take four AA batteries, and it says to use high-quality AA batteries. Uh, I assume that means Duracell, Energizer, Sanyo Interloop, anything like that. Rayovac, I don't know. If you've got a bunch of uh, Rayovac batteries sitting around, I'm pretty sure you can use them, but... I would highly recommend using what JetBeam tells you to use, and I would use some high-quality nickel metal hydrides. Don't go for some low-budget nickel metal hydrides, because uh, you might blow your flashlight up. Nah, you won't blow your flashlight up, but I don't think 900 lumens would like uh, would like that very much. Alright, so you have square-cut threads. I don't know if you saw that or not. 
Now, every time you unscrew the flashlight and you screw it back in, the light automatically comes on. I assume that's because it's an electronic switch. Some of them do that, some of them don't. Uh, like I said, since it's an electronic switch, it is going to draw a current, but it's probably something like 0.9 microamps. You're not even going to notice it that much. You know how long it would take uh, 0.9 microamps to uh, kill four AA batteries? Longer than the batteries actually last. Okay. Now you have the nice AR coated. Whoops. You can see there you have an AR coated lens, crystal coated precise optic system that Jetbeam uses. Uh, they're using a lot of their flashlights. The EA4 doesn't have. Well, actually, I think the EA4 does have that. But it's one of Jetbeam's famous uh, reflector systems. It's basically the precise optic reflector, um, aluminum polished. It's a crystal coating as well. I don't really see what difference that does. It looks pretty much the same as the EA4, but they say it's crystal coated, so whatever. All right, so you have the two switches. You have the main power switch, and you have the mode switch. Um, one thing this flashlight does that the EA4 didn't do, if you hold down the power switch on the EA4, it goes into lockout, and it tells you your voltage. Whoop, never mind. I forgot. It doesn't do that. Um, the EA4 is basically momentary, so you hold it down. It's a momentary activation. Turn it on, and you have to double tap it to go into strobe. That's the way the EA4 is. Turn it on, double tap it. That's strobe. Now, in this one, you just hold down the power button, and it goes into strobe. I do like that, so the flashlight doesn't have to actually be on to access strobe. Um, it is not random frequency strobe. It is the main, I think, 10 hertz. I believe it's 10 hertz, 10 or 12. My cat's over there doing something weird. All right, so there is intelligent mode memory. You turn the flashlight on, and it was in low mode, so... Now it goes to high, medium, low, high, medium, low. Some people complain they would have liked it to be low, medium, and high. But to me personally, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it does use a linear driven circuit board. Uh, therefore, there is no PWM. The most annoying thing about flashlights sometimes is they use that pulse width modulation. You can see it kind of strobing. But this one you can't. So linear driven circuit board, MOSFET linear driven circuit board. Okay, so now um, to access SOS, turn the flashlight on, hold the mode button, and it will go into SOS. I don't think 99% of the people that buy flashlights use SOS, but it's there if you ever need to use it. So now my biggest complaint on the SRA40 is it doesn't have an exact voltage meter, uh, voltage indicator for your battery life. On the EA4, turn it on and you hold it down. It obviously goes into the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it is now 5.2 volts. So that's how much you have left in the battery. It's 5.2 volts left in this battery. Once it gets to 4.4, it dies. This one, your battery indicator is two lights. 100% full, 50% full. 100%, 50%. I don't like that. I kind of wish it had been more like the EA4 and told you the 1, 2, 3, 4, told you exactly how many volts you had left, but... Not a big deal. I guess it's I guess it's okay. Um, not a whole lot of heat is, is generated from this flashlight, which means the XML2 is pretty efficient. Um, about almost the exact same amount of heat comes out of this thing out the front as this thing does, which signifies to me that this thing is extremely efficient and produces more lumens per um, amp than this one does. So that's pretty good. All right, so I'll take some of the stuff out of the package so you guys can see it. The cat decided to finally calm down. Get this nice little uh, certificate of approval. And you get this cool looking, awesome little packet. No, it's not a packet. Your instruction manual tells you all about the flashlight. There's the intensity right there, 38,000. Like I said, it's actually 35,000. And that's not too far off, so. Comes with 38,000 CDs. I wonder what kind of music that is. <laughs> All right, so you can use... Oh, okay, yeah. And for those of you that may ask, which I, I doubt you will, uh, for those of you that might ask, you cannot use 14500s. That would be a lot of voltage. All right, so you get that. You get the nice lanyard, which I have about a 1,000 of those. And you have the warranty card. I think this is a warranty card. Actually, it doesn't come with a warranty card. Never mind. Uh, who uses a warranty card anyways? All that good stuff. Oh yeah, there it is. Warranty card. Okay, I'm sorry. It does come with a warranty card. And I can't remember if I showed you guys. Okay, yeah. 
Now here's your charge system. Uh, it does have an basically integrated charge port, which is a pretty cool idea, but I can't remember if I mentioned it or not. Um, I don't think I did mention it. This flashlight only charges at 0.35 amps. That's 350 milliamps. That's not even half an amp. That's barely a quarter of an amp, or that's over, a little bit over a quarter of an amp. And you know how long it would take to charge four 2400 milliamp AA batteries at 350 milliamps? That would take all day. So you might as well just plug it into the wall, or not this. You might as well just plug your batteries into your battery thing and charge it to the wall. So, But it is there if you want to use it. I think when they say, please use high quality nickel metal hydrides, um, yeah, they mean that for rechargeable. So you can use cheaper batteries to power this flashlight, but I wouldn't use cheaper batteries to charge it. And in case some of you ask, which is a very stupid question, but I seriously doubt you'll ask it, there will be that random person out there, don't charge your primaries. Don't do that. <laughs> I can't imagine anybody trying to charge primary batteries. Okay. But there are those people out there that might try it. Never know. Okay. Give you guys some close-ups again. So like I said, the machining on this flashlight is fantastic. And Jetbeam did a really good job. Um, I got this flashlight for Cyber Monday because it was 15% off, but it's still $100 if you don't have any kind of discount, but that's a really reasonable price for a flashlight like this. I expected not to have too many modes for it being only $100, so like I said, there are only three modes, and this thing is extremely bright. All right, so this just about sums it up. So like I said, I'll take this thing outside um, here in a little while, and I'll show you guys how it compares outside to the EA4. Just that I let you know, this SRA40 just completely kills the EA4 and makes me not even want to have this EA4 anymore. I guess you can call that heat sinking. <laughs> I guess it is. I mean, it's kind of heat sinking. It is, sort of, but... It's not that big, it's not that much. Mm, there's not very much aggressive knurling on here, so hold it pretty tight in the cold or outside in general, because it's it does still slip out of your hands. The knurling is, is not that aggressive, but it still does have some, so you'll be able to get some pretty good grip out of this thing. Now, I'll try to do this, but I might get them as close as I can so you guys can see that the XML2 is a little bit smaller. Maybe not. Maybe you can't tell. I can definitely tell. But like I said, the XML2 is a little bit smaller than the XML, so... That does provide a little bit better throw. So anyways, that sums it up. If you guys have any questions, uh, like I said, reach me in the comments, and I'll get back to you as fast as I can. Thanks.